hustling every day. for choosing listen we know that this is like a gaming convention we understand that you could be engaged in any number of tasks and yet you have chosen to spend this time with us thank you so much welcome to the 20th year of PAX uh, I am Jerford K. Horcrims I am joined uh, by Mr. Chris Straub plosive plosive <laughs> sibilant uh, S all right an, an absolute, an absolute beast on the microphone. We know that you, you, you do, you do perfectly well that he can kick flows. Yes, I can. Um, yes, I and can. Now, and it is true that my friend uh, Mike Rahulik is not here with us at this particular show. Hopefully, the comic strip will help explain why that might be. Um, so be on the lookout uh, for various facts uh, and information about that, and I will entertain you. Um, with A's to your most heartfelt cues. Uh, from Zach Rhodes, Mr. Movies 87, from Louisville, Ohio, New Arcadia asks, hey Jerry and Chris, happy packs for you both. What are some of your fondest and most treasured memories from any packs you've attended? I mean, again, Kiko and I are the only ones who have been to all of them. But you have been to a lot of them. <laughs> I think the first one I went to was 2009. Really? Yeah. So out, and out, out, you probably had a booth at, at West, would be my guess, right? Yes, that was where it was. It was, it was West. Yeah. I remember, uh, gosh, was that, that would have been like when I was trying to decide whether I wanted, I knew I wanted to live in the Pacific Northwest. Oh, that's right. You used to be a visitor. <laughs> Right. It used, but, to be, it used to be like a rare treat to have a Chris. Yeah, and I, now there's, there might be too much Chris. Yeah, we're all... With uh, Bill, Bill Amon. Amon and, and yeah. Yeah. Bill, Bill Amon also and I, and I was, Yeah, yeah and he's, he's here, here. He's here in today. Uh, but I thought, oh, I have to live here, though. It seems like neat things are happening here. Yeah. That was a very formative. It turned out all right. Pax memory. Let's see. I'm, I'm trying to, so if I go back through. Oh, something very funny. There was, I mean, uh, this is one of my favorite memories, like, to tell other people, although perhaps at the moment it wasn't my favorite thing that ever happened. So they can do different things. I don't know if the laws are just different in Australia. Australia is a strange place for many reasons, but um, here, when someone wins the Omegathon, um, we have some confetti that flies out. And at Australia, giant gouts of flame shoot out of these canisters. <laughs> and it is, it is possible to stand too close um, to fire. Um, when it erupts. And it's far away. It's not like on the ground. It's up on a, on a pillar. No, no. But it's hot. It, it is. I mean, but these it's are like hot. leaping up off of the stage. And it's like from, if, if, you know, every year after that, they warn me. But that first time, it is, it's. You get a sunburn. Like a portal to hell essentially opens up on stage. And you have to, you have to live in a, in a world that you thought was impossible very briefly. It's just, it's not normal. Gouts of flame. It's not normal. Um, the ghost of Paxmas past from the sound of clanking chains asks, oh. Oh. what is something you would change about Pax if you could do it all over again? I, I can't imagine why I would change any of it. I feel like it, I feel like it sort of worked. Um, it's, I mean, this is how I feel as well. But what I would say is, you know, even at the very smallest version of the show, 
at the Maidenbauer Center, where several cults were formed in the space of just an hour or so. So, so you have to understand, we eventually had to get a new venue because the initial venue, I mean, much like the Heinz was the first year, right? We had to get a new venue because it literally could no longer contain the energies, the psychic waveforms that the show was generating. So imagine that like one floor of the convention was, basi it was basically a line. <laughs> I mean, in some ways. That's all they had, that's all it could accommodate? You know, it was the only place big enough to hold all of the people that wasn't the actual room where the event was taking place. So we were like, we have to, we ha they have to have something. They have to be able to entertain themselves some way. And we gave them like a ball. Blue ball. See? I see one of, one of the blue balls that Herons is still here among us. Um, they began to worship it. And I don't, I don't mean, like, I'm not being euphemistic. <laughs> They worshipped. They worshipped the ball. You know the scene in uh, the Ten Commandments uh, where he's like, "I'm gonna go up and get the commandments." Okay, you guys hang out. He comes down and they're immediately. <laughs> Let's melt our stuff down and make a bowl. And I always thought that's funny, but it's real, I guess. <laughs> Dad's not here. Let's make a god. He literally. He's like, he's like walking toward the mountain. He's like, "I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be right back." I'm gonna come back in like a second. And like a lot of the path up the mountain, I, I could still see the camp. So <laughs> like, what are you guys doing? We're just melting stuff. You know, we're just melting stuff. It's fine, it's our stuff. We can melt it if we want. Okay. Fucking shut up. I'm gonna be back in like 30 minutes. Y yeah, don't, right. don't make any bulls. You, know, thing, you wouldn't think that you'd have to tell somebody that. Don't make and worship any bulls is not ordinary instructions. But anyway, yes, it takes human beings <laughs> roughly 90 seconds to found a god um, and make it sacred. Just create a sacred space. Yeah, as fast as you can. In an instant. Um, and so we had to move out of that, that venue for that reason, because gods were being manufactured at a prodigious rate. Oh, no. See, you, you have to understand, sometimes people think that the cues from the Q&A are an opportunity for them to get out some of their creative writing uh, urges. Okay. So you'll have to endure this with me, I guess. Oh, now, before we continue, let me briefly, oh, I guess, apparently you have already found the Tiltify link. <laughs> this is the first time I looked at the bar. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, maybe I don't need to mention it, because it already has $2,115. Thank you so much. But for those who want to continue that trend. Yes, yes, exactly. For those, of, for those who celebrate, um, the Tiltify uh, link is right there for you to scan at will um, and throw money in. And in fact, I was just talking to Travis. Oh, see, there's $100 right there. Thank you so much. I was just oh. talking to Travis oh. about some interesting projects that this money funds. And I think you'll be shocked uh, at how cool you can make $100 um, outside of certain towns. Uh, Silas Etherington from Lime City, Ohio. Not long till threshing time. Bring me the coal, boy. I'll show you how man made a meal before petroleum could be bought off a corner. <laughs> That's good. I was just going to say, so let me just get to the next one. I'm just going to see if Silas Etherington... No. He has a, he has a no, through line. No, no, so, sometimes, sometimes there is just a rich vein of them through there. Um, test user from location asks. It's me, a real person at, PAX, at the PAX 2024. Oh, I know him. Yeah. What's a favorite booth you'd recommend to an average Joe, Jane, or Joral? Um, so I haven't, yesterday was pretty packed out. I, somehow I ended up on a stage with Matt Pat uh, playing Jackbox games. And he was actually, oh, he yes. was like really nice. Like this is the thing. So my, having, having been sort of, you know, adjacent to the industry for decades now, my, the device that I use, like the cognitive instrument that I use to determine whether or not someone is a fucker, 
is quite calibrated. Because it has to be, right? I mean, it's, it's lucky if you get to do weird things like this as your job, and it has to be jealously guarded, because other people would love to take it from you. Um, they would love to just draft on it if they can. Sometimes they'd like to steal it. And <clears throat> he, he's not a, like, the person that's in those videos is actually what he's like. <laughs> like, because you watch the videos and you're like, okay, fucking turn it down. No, 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 he is actually just, like, sweet, like, gentle and nice. And he's like, thank you so much for inviting me. It's like, nobody knows who I fucking am, dude. What are you talking about? Thank you for fucking letting me draft on your shit for fucking five seconds. I think, I think that you end up like a person, not you actually, but I mean, it goes for you too. But like, <laughs> we make our own, you can make your own hell. You can make, yeah, you can make your own fun. Well, yeah, like, but if he had, if that was an act that he well, had to no, take off, it would be doomed. It would be awful because that's not who he is. He's like, well, I gotta put the mask on and I gotta do that. No, it's, it's, Don't do that. No, it's way. Is it, it's this easier. isn't a microphone. <laughs> Uh, I, did, I just had an object in my hand. I'm like, well, if I put my mouth by it and talk, surely everyone will be able to hear. It's more complicated than that. Come on, device. So what it means, unfortunately, yep. is that I was basking in his warm glow, and I didn't have much of a chance to go out and check out the things on the floor. But I did have a chance to stop by the Greater Than Games booth and check out Compile, which, it's hot shit. I mean, it's, that's about as good as a, I don't know, I think that's about as good as a game can be. And so, but I've had a chance, like, you know, over the last year or so, it's, it was possible to do little demos of it, like, at the booth. They might have a little table set up, you could check it out. And it's like, where it ended up getting to here at the end, you can actually, like, look at the way it is, finally. You can do it, you can, like, pre-order it if you want to, but, I mean... It's really, really strong. I just think you should do a demo if you can. Um, <clears throat> so, when it comes to this green bar, it can be difficult to understand like, what this can be made to represent in the real world. Certainly, I know, you know this is for my, my druids and healers out there, certainly when the green bar go up, um, we feel like we're doing a good job. And so, I mean, I, we love that on its, on its face. We like that. But um, one of the projects that this money funds is, so Child's Play, in addition to having um, you know, lists of stuff that hospitals ask for that you can get, we, it also does something, it does something really crazy, which is that we have funded a position called a game tech at a bunch of different hospitals because what we realized eventually What's the red part? Is that, are we taking damage? No, that'll heal up. You just, if you just I, wait. We need, we need hots. Um, so, but basically, um, the way that it works in there is that it's all, it's, it's all well and good to, for them to have a bunch of technology, but I mean, I think that we've all been to school and we know what happens to the technology on the cart that rolls around, eventually we realized that there had to be somebody to help people use it. And then, if necessary, like, play the game with you, right? And <clears throat> the newest version of that is that we actually paid for a game development position to make software that, uh, it, that is therapeutic in purpose and is designed with the aid of, of you know, people who are in the child life department. So there's three, essentially, VR experiences, although they, they, two of them have an AR component. The first one is like Booger Blaster. I mean, so what we found out was that, you know, kids are not interested in doing uh, physical therapy. They don't think that that's a good time. And uh, so we figured out what movements were required, and then they made a game that is in VR that gets them to do the movements, and they're none the wiser. Um, they have no idea that plus, they're being manipulated. Plus, they get to look at boogers. Yes, also, which a huge nose. kids love. And boogers are coming out. So, you know, booger blaster. The second one is, I feel like the red bar is getting way too big. What does it mean? Here. 
Oh, it's a matched donation. Oh, oh okay. thank you, Chaz. I, I was, I was like, so if somebody is making a matched donation, that's good. I don't, we don't like the red, is what I'm saying. But it's fine. It's fine. It could have so, been like a, a more saturated, less saturated green. I feel like, like red is not. Or blue. It, it's fine. No, but listen to this. So, it is entirely possible if you are in the hospital to pet a dog. Sometimes it will bring you a dog and you can pet it. But there are parts, exactly, right? Dogs! Um, but there are places inside the hospital where dogs may not go. So if you are immunosuppressed, there's, you know, there's areas of the hospital where such creatures are not allowed entrance. So they made a, they did like photogrammetry and scanned all the service dogs and they made a, like an AR application where they can like play with the dogs and pet the virtual dogs. And it might even be the same dog that they could have pet when they were out there. And I, I can't stress this enough. There is also a cabinet full of hats that can be placed on the dogs. So that's, that's the next level shit. It's not even DLC. It comes, these in, the dogs, base, it comes in the base version of the game. And these dogs don't mind. No, they, they don't give a shit. They're kind of about it. No, you can put a little vest on them. <laughs> no, they don't mind a bit. Yeah, and it's fine. It's fine. The last one is called Gurney Journey. And you know how, like, in shows where bad medical things happen, there's always that shot of a terrified person on a gurney who's being wheeled out, and then there's just the lights passing over. <laughs> like, every fucking show has this. It turns out that's actually real. It sucks super bad. Um, and young people don't, they don't like that. And essentially what this application does is it is able to mark the physical space of the doorway from your room as a, you know, as a, 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 a point of egress, essentially. And when the gurney rolls out of your room, you are taken to like a frosty wilderness and you can just stay there as long as you want. Like it's, anyway, so when bar go up, um, that's the sort of thing that that bar enables. It's, it's, pretty, fl it's pretty fresh and um, obviously I thank you so much for enabling these cyber hounds at all. I gotta remember how I draw you. <laughs> Every time I do this, I have to decide on a style. Oh. This, the last time I did this, it was this brood hollow look. Yeah. But I'm not given to it. I have to do whatever I want, but I don't know which one is appropriate. Well, I mean, I, I'll try that one. I mean, that's, it's not my department. No, I hate this right now. <laughs> this is just job. Oh, it's just work. You have to invent a whole new Jerry. Yeah. <clears throat> Listen, you can do this one if you want. I think the head is just a white circle. I may do that. Now, that's, ink, that's true. There's no, there's no, uh, there's this, no reason that it there's has a to Gabe be. and there's no Gabe and Tiger. This is exactly this is my right. I, I, okay. I, so maybe this is my department. I'm glad I could help. Uh, yeah. So this is this is why you should not be flip uh, with your artist. This is this. There's no reason, I, I, Chris, I apologize. I, I, I was, <clears throat> I was cruel and unthinking. <laughs> I was cruel and unthinking. And I, you, I mean, you're helping me out a lot by doing this and I, I, I didn't to, need to be a dick about it. I have to figure out how this is lit. Shh. I have to think. <laughs> Ingeborg Rod. from Gothenburg asks, Hi, this is my first PAX. <sighs> That's how I, I feel too. No, um, I'm sorry. I wasn't, I was paying attention to this. That, no, I, that deserves more <laughs> applause. Yay. First PAX is great. Exactly. Especially since it seems like they might be from Sweden. Um, um, I'm staying across the river and walking in every day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What is some advice for maximizing my time while I'm here, or is there anything good to see on my walk to or from uh, to or to or fro in Boston? My Boston knowledge is very, very detailed. Within a hundred feet <laughs> of the center, like I, 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 I have like a lidar scan. Okay. I know every crack. <laughs> In the pavement. But that's it. But, and, but also, it's like, you know, when we first started doing the show out here, 
this area, it was it was like it was blasted out. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like it was. It looked like it had been. It looked like a war zone, frankly, and now it's like full of it's like full of hotels that are like too expensive for me to stay at. So that's, this is this is a novel uh, arc, and we've had a chance to see the entire thing. It, it's like fucking Sim City. You know how you like you you make a little district, and then it goes, Meh! <laughs> and now it's a bunch of huge buildings. That's basically what happened out here. So unfortunately, my my knowledge of the town proper is not incredible. Um, I understand roughly where the water might be. Yeah, you traded uh, uh, breadth that for depth. Um, although it's entirely possible there's more water around here. I would say <clears throat> the main thing I want to tell you, Ingeborg. Yeah. The main thing I want to tell you, Ingeborg, is that you have to have a coat. Um, I thought that it would be fine to leave the center and check out the food trucks, which I, should, which I recommend that you do, um, but do have a coat. I went, I, I went out there and it's like, it, listen, it's not going to take me very long to get there. Stygian winds. <laughs> F- like, flayed the skin off my face. When I came in, it was as a wet, grinning skull. <laughs> like, I, like, at night, I was like, I woke up and my lips were so dry from having been outside earlier that day. They were like strips of jerky. I had, I had to moisten them. I had to wake up to moisten um, because my lips had been stolen by Boston. Um, so I would definitely check that out. Um, you know, for me, I think that, I mean, obviously I have a, I'm motivated to do so, but tomorrow night, I would recommend that you join us for Acquisitions Incorporated. Um, it's ladies night, um, except for me. It's gonna be me. Um, and Strix, and uh, Evelyn, uh, and my video game uh, RPG cyber daughter uh, certainty. I know I, exactly right. Exactly right. Now, there's only one gray envelope. So uh, let's see what type of question this is. I don't know if that's a genre. Um, an educator in the wild from the internet asks. I grew up with a traditional style of learning. Things have changed this year, and I am told that AI is here, and there is nothing I can do but embrace it and adapt. I'm forced to find AI-proof assignments. Um, I'm worried about the future. What can I do? Current experts have no suggestions. This, I guess, gray envelopes are a genre. Um, this, this person is, is, is being torn apart. Uh, by a world they no longer recognize. And that's a a color of envelope, it turns out. Um, No, uh, I mean, I would love to talk to you about this, Chris. I would love to talk about it. I have a lot of feelings about it. I feel like I'm yelling into the, I feel like I'm yelling into a fucking chasm whenever I talk about this shit. (laughs) It's completely fucking crazy. Predictive text, predictive algorithms. Yeah. These language models, these yeah. the visual L-L-M. models, yes. They are not any more intelligent than predictive text, than grammar, right? They're just, they're just very, very good at it, right? Yeah, it's like when you say, hey, do you, and then your keyboard says, want, have, that's all it's doing on it's a ba- it's huge ba- scale. It's, it's crazy Bayesian shit, right? Yeah, and it cannot attain that scale unless it steals data, and it is not making decisions. I think it's a really neat tool, I think the technology is really fascinating. Absolutely, it but, it, but, but it's not God. Yeah, but it is not doing analytics. If you ask it like, hey, what's the best course for my learning program for my school? It's just going to regurgitate things that it thinks you like hearing. Well, the, the abs- no, think. listen. It can't the, think. The best case scenario, Mr. Straub, yes. is that it just copies wholesale something that a smart person wrote that yes. it stole. Correct. That is correct. That's the best possible outcome. And I hate it. It's because it's like, because we're like, we're like dorks. Like we like, we like technology. We like to go boop, boop, boop. And we like to go boop, boop. You know, we like to do the beeps. Oh, that's me all day. Yeah. I mean, we, 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 we use technology to make art. I mean, it's, it's, 
so being in a position where you have to like say, well, either A, this isn't as cool as you said, or B, it literally can't exist without you fucking taking my shit. Mm -hmm. And then you get treated like a Luddite or some type of fucking, like you want to, I'm not saying you have to live in the log cabin that you made. I'm saying that these motherfuckers have to pay me. <laughs> I think but you know what, like, like that's all I'm saying. It's like if, 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 you, if, if you're going to make these billions of dollars, because you're on the same list I am. Yeah. If you have been on the internet, as long as we have, roughly 3.4 billion years, um, they think that your stuff is free and they can have as much of it as they want and then they can leverage the, they can leverage the demon they've made. And the biggest problem, this imp. The biggest problem to me about that is that like, it's a great tool, but it should be in the hands of people that are not trying to remove payment to artists. Like, that's the goal. This will replace labor. But that's not what I would use it to do. No. I think that... No, cool I, I, think that, I think that that's quite bizarre. It, and this is the thing. It's like the people, who, the people who love that stuff the most, they are so excited at the prospect that they won't have to talk to people like you or me ever again, which I understand. I, I oh, don't, I'm not saying... Listen... I'm very, very annoying, Hang on, especially I, if you haven't paid me. Yeah, I have a, I have a, I have a, a, a skeet, is what the children call it on skeet. Blue Sky, which describes this exactly. I will read it to you. We're five years from being able to tell a computer, make a movie tailored to my interests, and instantly watch a high-quality movie where the gummy bears jerk Doctor Who off into Soundwave's cassette hole. It's just giving me what I want to see. <laughs> it's not making choices. No, no, I didn't even know. I didn't even know I wanted to see that. Just right in the hole. All right. Um, singing by from Philly asks. I'm super excited to see the old D-pad logo for this Pax anniversary. Tell me about it. Um, it's so crazy. I see the um, like the old school T, with where the logo is like already like it would be several years of washing from now. And it stirs the spirit. Because I had that PAX 2004 tea for a minute and it looked exactly the goddamn same. Um, which PAX themes have been your faves? Camp, space, abstract lines? I would have said space. Yeah. Space is so fucking cool. Space is great. Dude, do, do you have, so is this, this is how I feel. So. You, on, is this the primary device that you use to make things? Yes. Do you have any of your spaceships? Oh, yes. Let me see where I could. How I'll, I'll soft them? shoot. I'll soft shoot. Um, no, 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 no. Yeah. So Go ahead. the the we had messed around with we had like the a set of Pax pins and designs that were sort of like the Pax in space um, concept. Pax Explorers Club, I think it was what it was called. Right. And. And so then we, that, you know, somehow metastasized into this full range of stuff where there's like an awesome jacket. I see this jacket everywhere. And so that, that sort of indicates to me that I'm not the only one that likes it. With like the remove before flight tags and then something like six completely custom embroidered patches all over it. And then depending on the show. No, I'm just going to show people stuff they're not supposed to see yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Um, but, but basically, you know, during the show, then it's, a, it's like a, it's a space-themed, like, water bottle, the pin set, but then there was a T-shirt for every show where Chris took, like, the building that... Oh, my God. I wanted to evoke the shape of the building as though the building was the ship we were in. Exactly, and it's so cool. And it's like, obviously, this just looks like a ship already. This one was an easy one, right? Yeah, this one was pretty straightforward. Look, at this, this is the bridge already. We're looking out. At exactly. It. Yeah. But then you actually, like, broke the buildings apart you know, like, as a diagram and, like, identified. But you created, like, in your mind, there's a coherent system of physics. Oh, yeah. Because they all share certain aspects of the drivetrain. Right. They have a big ring on them, and I'm like, what does that do? And I don't like to re recycle. I don't like the idea that every FTL is some kind of <laughs> Alcubier drive. I want to not just warp space. How else? What else can we do with space? It's just. I'm very excited to talk about that. Also. Anyway, this is the sort of person you want to give a project to design spaceships based on convention centers. 
Long story short, this, if you ever it's, need to do that for some, yes, it's talk the to him. Only thing in my portfolio at this point. No, and I and I think that this I think that this year's designs are are straight murder. I'm especially proud of the photo book that my friend Dave put together. I don't know if you've had a chance to to get your mitts on it. It's kind of good. Like, it's kind of good. What's that? Are you oh. fucking kidding me? Okay, that's dude, that's insane. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna exhort you to purchase it then. Apparently you can't buy it. Dude, you understand? Like if you see one carrying one, you just take it. Yeah. Just as fast as you it's, can. Well, we've given you no alternative. It's, no, I mean, it, then much like a, a large language model, it's yours now. Yeah. You that, may the, have it. The only thing that matters is who is holding it currently. Right. Um, that's it. So, I mean, have a great show. Um, no, no. Uh, but you have to understand, our poor Dave, like, I'm so glad he's not here, because sometimes he's like trying to take pictures of me and shit. So I can actually talk about him in, in a cool way, and he won't know, because he would, he would writhe under it like a worm. Um, he has been so, he loves that book so much, and it's the result of decades of cool pictures that he and Kiko took, and then he winnowed them down until it hurt, and then he had to winnow them again. And what's left is just cream. And he was so nervous. He was so worried that we were going to, that, that no one was going to want it. <laughs> and now it's fucking so <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give him a buddy punch in the arm. He'll be like, huh? Huh? We'll, we'll see if that works. Um, but I think that, that like I say, I, this, this year, especially with the, like the multi-panel garments and like the shell, there's some really, really great stuff, I think. But that last year's VHS shit was nuts. That's maybe my favorite one. That's too, it's too good. Yeah. I, like, I, as I, a full line, it's too good, right? It's simply too good. Yeah. There's got to be a way to make money off of this. Oh, there is. Um, TNT Mongoose from the Windy Apple um, asks, is there a year and or a PAX where you thought, damn, this is next level? <laughs> uh, what made it that for you? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, honestly, I would, but that, would have to be, that would have to be the second year of PAX East because I toured this building. After, after we had done that show at the Heinz, I, I, was, I stayed in town for a little bit to um, check out Boston and also to tour a new building that we might need at some point in the future, which is the building that we're in now. And I thought, and I was like, well, I, I mean, I guess we can go take a look at it, but it's a little big and we'll never need it. Um, and then we needed it the next year. Um, and then we slowly sort of grew the show to fill out the space. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think this is this is probably the coolest. This is probably the coolest venue outside. The, the Melbourne one is pretty nice. Yeah. But this is like the most coherent. Like as a PAX experience, it's basically all in the ship. Depending on what year it is in Seattle, it might be like seven. You might have to run. I would some. I would sometimes arrive at my panels down at the Benaroya Hall, slick with sweat. <laughs> Because it was like six win. blocks away. Something's always happening to your skin yeah. at these shows. No, it's like too wet, too dry. I can't win. Here, Jeff Raven from Club PA asks, was there ever an all hail ball? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. That was, their, that was their, um, their exhortation of the ball. Was there ever an all hail ball moment at PAX East? No, it's too big. Um, the, the issue, and it's like, I don't care if you manufacture your own religions 15 to 30 people at a time spread out throughout the center. The issue is when you all believe in the same God at once. <laughs> That's when it becomes dangerous. Right. I mean, and there's not a benign component to that. I feel at some point it does start to talk to you. And you must listen. <laughs> and you must adhere. Well, yeah, because it's not speaking, it, it is, it's not a sound. No, no, it's no. It's a frequency. It speaks to you with you. You are the language. You are the instrument of its divination. Yeah. You are its You're, basically, you're essentially being plucked. Yes. Like a string. No let a ball do that. Yeah. It's, it's core. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Lisa Frunk from Trapper Keeper asks, 
Uh, what's happening with PAX today that new attendees can jump into and enjoy just as much as someone who's been coming here for 5, 10, or 20 years? Now, I think it's possible to get good at being a PAX attendee. You can optimize certain things. For example, you might have a coat um, so that when you go out to the taco truck, um, you aren't stripped to the bone by Boston's demon winds and the, and the harpies that flit upon them. But um, the way that we typically describe PAX is that it's sort of like people essentially build their own convention out of the parts that we provide. So imagine it's just like a big Lego bin. And then for some people, they really like the concerts and the live shows. Like they, they like the concerts and the acting stuff, let's say. Um, some people, they really like, like for them, going through and like attending community panels and like digging into these unique perspectives that attendees themselves create and bring, you know, that's a big part of it for them. For some people, they, like the expo floor is the main thing. For some people, um, and I think that we saw this, like it really started to happen here because there's so much space for it. Like some people attend this show as though it were PAX Unplugged, even though there's a whole show for that. Um, that Ryan worked very hard on. Um, no one appreciates it. No, what I'm saying is that like, it, it, was, it was when we saw that people were attending this show like it was a, a tabletop show, and they were spending the whole time in free play using the library, entering tournaments, checking out new stuff. It's like so many people built that show out of this show that we just took that and moved it to Philadelphia. Um, so I think the, the reason that PAX works is because there's so many different things happening that you can essentially construct that. Um, you can construct the show that you want. You can have it your way. Um, ever given from the Suez Canal uh, says no. what routines have formed in 20 years of PAX. First you get up, look at your ball, say I love you, <laughs> I'm going to do your bidding today. Yeah. Then, oh, it's fine. Let's see, I mean, what, what's funny, like the, in terms of the, the routines, like the basic shape of PAX, it's sort of like a, a, a fractal, or maybe it's like you retain the ratio, but you can stretch. Yeah. The basic shape was there insofar as it had an expo, it had various panels, you could meet people that you thought only existed online whether they're your friends or someone from a, a video or something. Um, and then there were concerts and other types of performances. Like the, the shape of the show, the ritual of the show is more or less, was more or less there in place at the very beginning. Now, it was very small. I told the story a couple times already, but it, it always bears repeating, I think, that the first expo floor that we had was primarily populated by machines that Microsoft's QA department brought. Um, they had a build, because it was a really cool thing, they had a build of Forza, because if you had three Xboxes, I'm not sure why you would, but if you had three Xboxes, there was a way to play Forza that would render the left and right sides of the car like window experience as well. And so they had that and they showed that off and it was pretty cool, but that was the whole thing. I'm struggling. I like this little guy a lot. Wait, uh, and I, no, you should keep him. I think I'm just going to leave him in. No, there's, there's no reason not to. <laughs> like, first of all, those who were here will get it. <laughs> right? He's they just, will know about it, and then I will be chastised forever. It's, it's kind of like the thing where you, like, you sketch something, and you're like, this is perfect, and then you ink it, and you ruined it. No, this is actually quite common. I don't even want to like, close the lines here. I think this just just a gentle charm. I was, yeah, yeah, there's, there's, there, it's, it's, it's the iconic, like it's the minimum viable product version it's that, yeah, it's of the, my body. I prefer to think of it as, you know, the story of, was it Picasso and the horse drawing? I'm not an artist, so oh, okay. don't tell me this like artist shit. Like, okay. no, no, but what's it, what's the actual story about the horse? Oh, the story is it's like, like, uh, uh, the guy wants to commission a, a portrait of his horse and, uh, he's like, I'm gonna, I, well, it's going to cost you a million dollars. And he's like. That's impossible, but I, why would it cost that much? And then the artist reduces the horse to two strokes, and it's exactly his horse. He's like, well, that's amazing. He's like, yeah, well, the payment is for the 30 years it took me to learn how to do that. Oh, I'm man. saying I have reduced you to a perfect platonic solid. Yeah, 
an, an atomic uh, element of grammar. Yeah. A single node. The mole. Right. Um, so Garrett uh, mm, from Corcoran Wharf Nuj asks, Nuj um, hi, I left my badge at home. I need you to find it and take a video of yourself cutting it up. So registration will give me a new one. Thanks. <laughs> That's a bummer. Oh, boy. Shmavatar Shmong <sighs> from Earth Kingdom. Okay. Uh, yeah, but we're not fucking with that one? Okay. Um, asks, hi, fellas. I recently connected with all versions of myself, both past and future, mm -hmm. and I think it's given me godlike powers. How should I fix the ending to How I Met Your Mother? Like I said, I mean, there, there are those who, who take the format, take this platform, and they use it for their creative writing projects, and we respect it. It's fine. You know what? You can end that show any way you want. I mean, you can write different endings. You can revisit it. You can write yourself into it. Have you heard about this? People will write a story with their favorite characters, and then they're in the story, too. And the other characters are like, you're the coolest guy I've ever met. <laughs> and it's a pretty cool art this form that's been emerging. This, this, this does occur. This does occur. There's, so I am blessed uh, with daughters. I got a, a grip of them. Like, I got extra, frankly. A brace. And too many, frankly. Um, nah, it's fine. It's a good number. But, but what, it's, what it's granted me is entree into like, their youth culture. And, and because, like, my relationship with them is pretty good, I think that I get a chance to see things that... I, I, I'm not sure all dads are getting this, this content. Um, and so there is like a sub-genre, uh, like a sub-sub-genre of TikTok videos called Your Name. Okay. And it's basically like... It's like... It's, it's basically like self-inserts. <laughs> oh, are these the ones where it's like... You're not actually in there, but it's like smoldering. It's like They're men looking and women looking camera. at you in various smoldering ways. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen some of those. And I thought they were, I didn't know that that was the format. I thought it was like POV of like, I, you're watching me be murdered. And then they're acting it out, and then you're supposed to feel the feelings about your friend, or the loved one being I killed. I think we might be looking at different videos. That's not cool. Um, I may have just gone down that hole deeper. Exactly. Uh, Brian B. from Watertown asks, gastrointestinally speaking, which packs um, have been your best and worst? Ooh. <sighs> let's see. I mean, if, if Mike were here, the tales he could tell. Um, let's see. So I think that in terms of like a food town, Seattle is pretty good, but Melbourne is probably superior. M Melbourne is nuts folks like it it's the perfect city i don't understand what's going on with this place uh, in C in you know in seattle you would go into an alley to be murdered that's primarily that's you know in the same way like if you were like to look at a map and say like here's the major exports the major exports of seattle alleys is knives <laughs> like it's, used it's, knives it's blood it's your blood yeah um in Melbourne, that's where you go to get ramen. Like, they have a, they just have a concept that we don't have. It's like, imagine, it's like, imagine if you could gentrify an alley. Right? They figured it out. They cracked they the figured out. It's like, they figured out some way to make an alley like a place that you want to go into. And it's like, um, here's the ramen place, and then here's like a stationary shop. I don't understand what these things are doing in alleys. No, they could have um, been anywhere, but they chose the alley. Yes, yes, but that's the that's the laneway, um, and they're full of like amazing coffee and like two story ramen places. One story of which is like literally underground. It's just playing Seven Samurai over and over on the wall. It's it's where you want to go to get it, and I would say that I would say that Pack South obviously. Um, Pack South is is killer. It's always it's always in our hearts. What I will say is that. It's possible to eat an incredible amount of brisket. It's possible to eat so much brisket that the body ceases to function. Um, it don't work no more, and um, it He's it takes a while. It takes now. a while. It's the same as like I, mean, I imagine it's the same sort of like from a digestive perspective. I think it's the same as like a huge snake. 
that has an entire antelope in it. It's gonna, it's gonna work out eventually, but it takes a while. And we shouldn't question how it happens either. It's no, not, and we're not gonna go into it. We don't need to know. No. Uh, oh boy, my Arrakis from my Dune asks. Wait, let me see how this is typed. Oh, I love it already. It's like, it's the camel case. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Forgive it's fine. Well, who's your biggest sci-fi crush? Mine is Duncan Idaho. I'd like to butter his taters. Okay, you know. It's not, that's not okay. All right. I'm glad, I'm glad I could offer this service to these fucking perverts. Brenda Senda from 20 Leagues South asks... Some researchers are postulating that cats speak a sort of pigeon human language that is unique to the region and even the owner. Yeah, that sounds right. What other animals do you think might be trying to meet us halfway? What if Lovecraftian incomprehensibility is actually cute? Here is, here is the thing that I thought was the weirdest. So they have crows, like in Kyoto, they have crows. I mean, it, it's, like, it's basically the same dude. It's not, like a, it's not like a materially different, like they don't like drive around in cars or something. Like it's a bird. It's like a black bird. Like so you, you get it. Like you know what type of bird it is, right? Yeah. And they have a dialect. Like, like, they, don't, they don't make the same fucking sounds. They don't talk like our crows. They are definitely crows. I got up close to one. But they laugh. Like, the, their, their basic mode of speech is this weird cackle. Why? And I don't just mean, like, the grackle sound. I mean, the way that they talk is, like, percussive. It's like, rah, rah, rah. And they're just, like, up in the trees, and it's just, you feel fucking, you feel... If you watch. You feel shamed. <laughs> you feel like these birds are fucking with you, and they're just birds. Carl, pronounced Carl in these pots from around here somewhere, please send help, asks, what was your favorite aspect about PAX in the early days and what is your favorite aspect now? I mean, back in the day, um, especially like, like in the freeze pop era, so I, I basically used to program the, like the music shows at PAX were just like all the people that I wanted to listen to. <laughs> Like that was that was like I had that power in those days just oh, to like literally choose that, who would perform. Is that why uh, Darkest of the Hillside Thickets did it? Okay, I was like, how did they have they get here? Okay, you just wanted to have. No, I literally would just like choose. Like I would just go to my playlist and send those people emails and say, "Do you want to come play more of my show?" <laughs> and sometimes they would say yes. So this is how we knew MC Front a lot, like a lot of the classic like nerdcore shit. Um, Nerdcore shit, and then uh, really, really interesting. Darkest of the Hills, I think it's this like Lovecraftian, like pop rock metal. Yeah, it's really, really fun. Um, but in addition to those, then you have like the different takes on VG music. I didn't have a chance to check out this, like this, these like, funk interpretations that were going on last night, hmm. just because I was at, I was at the Ak Inc event across the street. But have you ever heard Metroid metal? Yeah. See, for me, that's like. I love that motherfucker. His shit is so good. And, I mean, I used to just invite... I, I would just keep pushing that button. I just wanted to hear it over and over again. Yeah. You, are you familiar with it? I've, like, really I've insane heard, um, timings. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, tr it's very challenging for me. Um, and so, you know, back in the day, because I was literally just putting on everybody from my playlist, I spent a lot of time on those right now. My favorite aspect of the show now, I think, is actually Tabletop which is weird at the video game show. Um, but, you know, we like it. We like that part of it so much that eventually it just sort of jumped out. It, it, it like, broke containment. And now it exists, you know, independently of the show. It's crept out and, and manifest in other towns. Um, but that's, like, I'm slowly, I'm slowly, like, entering. I can feel it. I can feel it you know, rapidly approaching. I can feel the coot era. M manifesting in my life and I know I know that it's coming I know that very soon I'm going to start getting seriously into Napoleonic 
uh, reenacting. I don't have an intention to do this. It's not my goal. It would require a very significant amount of investment. I can, I'm just saying I can see it from here. Yeah. Uh, I, I can start working on the accent, I guess. I can, whatever I need to do to get, to get prepared. Ancient of Days from Everywhere asks, Hi, it's me, God. I know about the weird stuff you're into. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> and I've decided to forgive you if you retrieve from me the Holy Grail so that I can make a shrimp cocktail in it. I don't think that's God. I've worked with God. You I know. are no God. I don't think that's him. Uh, Simakin from PC asks, what is something that used to be at a PAX that you miss? Oh. I mean, most, I've tried to retain, if, if I, I try to operate in such a way that I don't have to miss any stuff. If I want to see a thing, I just tell Ryan that it has to be there. <laughs> I do this. Je DiMaggio, from the heart of it all, asks, what's the best game you ever played with your partner? A Let's game see. of love. Lorb. The best game I've ever played with. Which partner? I have some. I have several. Um, What's the context? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, I mean, back in the day, like, there was a version of uh, Mech Warrior on the Sega Genesis where the game was basically, you, just, you have a mech, I mean, that much, there's probably, you, you get that, right? There's a robot. You get to have a mech. Um, this, yeah, and there's a warrior they in They really there. figured out what people yeah, were playing. Yeah, they, they dialed it. in. It's like, listen, if we don't put a mech and a warrior in here, we're doing something wrong. Um, but there was a way to play it in co-op, <laughs> but there wasn't actually any additional content or anything. It just made it so that one person was turning the top of the mech, oh. and one person was just moving around. They basically, they literally just took the inputs and <laughs> broke them over two sets of controllers. Right. And those were like those were the most making co-op basically out of nothing. It actually revealed all these fun things about it and like breaking up the cognitive load. So for a while there, like space flight sims were like were like a big deal. They were happening all the time. Like, um, like X Wing and then TIE Fighter, like, and then eventually oh, they yeah, had more sophisticated those, yeah. ones like Tachyon, and but there, there was lots, lots of different ones. Um, what's the one with the fucking the Kill Rathy, the Wing Commander? A Wing Commander, yeah. Uh, like, you know them cats. Oh, oh man! And there's so many inputs. Like you're like manipulating shields. Like if you're playing that as a solo person, <laughs> that's it's like a comical amount of inputs. But there are actually enough, this is like the, the MechWarrior thing like taken to the, like the right place. The game has so many inputs that it's a co-op game for free. One person just sits yeah. in front of the keyboard, one person is using the flight stick, that's at, that's at least two games. Um, and so- and you can do this with any controls the number of times you want, so I only get up arrow, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. there's eight people playing with me. And it is not fun. No, this, but this, this is what we need in this is what we need in Hell Divers, actually. But we, we need somebody on each of those arrows. Let's just get it done. Let's just make it happen. Hell Divers has really grabbed me. Yes. It, the tone is amazing. It's actually really, really legit. So are wonderful. you are you fucking playing? Why are we not playing this together? I don't know. Democracy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. For yeah. democracy. Manage democracy. No. Excuse me. Yeah, manage Excuse democracy. You. Excuse you. No, no, dude. I didn't listen. I didn't know you were in there. Let's. We gotta. I'm in we gotta. Go, I got a lot of crazy shit. I'm in there, dog. I got that. I got the exosuit. Um, a handsome fellow from the other side of the mirror asks, "What is the strangest experience you've had at a PAX?" Oh, man, I have to think about that for a second. God, they are very strange. Well, I, I, I find this level of social interaction quite strange, to begin with. Right. This whole thing is quite weird. No, you have to gear back up to it, to being able to do it. Uh, I think maybe the strangest one I had was one I remember not very much of, but uh, it was a, it was PAX East, and uh, Frontalot was here, and he said- MC Frontalot. Yeah, and he said, do you want to come to a, I guess it was a, a hotel room party with Anna Monaguchi, and I brought Bill Amond oh, no. with me. Bill Amond? 
And we to the room party? He wanted to go. And we went, and it was a, a, a very festive affair. I can only imagine. Um, Bill Amon is not especially festive. Yeah. You should under, this is you part of the You would get that story. impression. But he, uh, but like. But, he, was, but he, he, did he cut a rug? No, there was no dancing. It was, it was a hotel room. Oh. Uh, it was very full. So full that oh. dancing was not. Quite uh, dense. Was forbidden. Uh, uh, I think, but like, and on the walk back, which was way too late, I dropped my phone and I broke it. I broke the screen. And I just remember thinking like, who else? I don't even remember who I met there, but I remember like this is significant. These are cool people. I will really? never get to hang out with well, in any other context. Is, they're pretty fucking cool. They're already very cool. They were, it was like, a, just they were elevated. A too cool, honestly. No, I never get to go to stuff like that, and I've never been invited back. And uh, I think that's very clear why. Yeah, just, yeah. They they knew they, they performed the ritual. As soon as you left, they performed the phone breaking ritual. Yeah, they they cleansed it. So there um, are no pictures of the account. Yeah. So. I would, the strangest experience was it wasn't anything in particular, but it was the entirety perhaps of the first PAX Australia, which I really, really like. That's a great show, but holy shit, dude. The very first show was at something called the Melbourne Showgrounds. I mean, you might not know this. Like, do you, have I never told this before? Maybe I didn't say it out of shame. I thought, I mean, uh, I've heard some of this, but is, maybe there's a new twist on it. The modern version of the show takes place in the, you know, the Melbourne Exposition Center, right? Or yeah. Melbourne Convention Center. Right. And it's like a super modern, really cool, really interesting building. It sort of looks sculptural outside. It's like right by the waterfront, like it's ballin'. The showgrounds is a place where they race horses. But it is At, big. Expo was in a barn. A barn. It was a, it was a torrential downpour, so we had to invent hallways outside with tarps. But the rain was so, there was so much rain that it was flowing underneath the tarps, like a river, like enough water to like splash up on your shoes. Um, the, you know, where we would do, like the main stage was in another different barn. It was. It's all barns. The smell of hay. <laughs> and that barn was constructed on top of a sub barn. <laughs> and beneath that. A meta barn. Um, no, it, it was, and honestly, it was, it was similar to the Heinz where like, you know, the first time we held the show, um, you know, a lot of people have like good memories of that particular show, and I, and the show felt right, and somehow this show also felt right, but it was in several adjacent barns, <laughs> and then there was like, and then you know, part of the expo floor, another separate part of the expo floor was basically like in a tent. Yeah. It was like a big tent that I think was primarily used to trade feed. <laughs> it paints a very different picture of uh, Melbourne entire. Yes. Yes, yes. And then, so now, depending on, you know, what time of year Pax Oz is, you can still sort of see, like, there's still a touch of the showgrounds in there because it's a very fancy, like, when there's horse racing out there, it's a very fancy time. And the hats that these, the hats that these, that the, the, the women, if you go there, you're doing it up, right? Yeah. The hats that these women wear are, like, they might be birds. Like... Like they're they are sculptural constructed it's a, things. It's, that's a horse race tradition, and I'm not sure why, the but it is the fascinator. Yeah, it's wild. We love oh, that. Oh, here now, we are very very close oh, to the end of the panel, so you you must draw furiously. And also, let me thank you so much. What five thousand sixty nine sixty nine? Really <laughs> nice, nice. Um, it's, it's for the kids, God damn it. Um, they don't know about that number. Um, they'll find out. Um, but I, I feel like this is a pretty auspicious final question to be granted, and so I think that we should do precisely what Sam Bridger from Bam Sidger asks, which is that we iterate an ancient Pax tradition. It does require your knuckles. So oh, yes. um, let us iterate this ritual here at the very, very end of the panel, if we could. Now, I'm going to say one, two, three, and then the crack is going to happen. 
It's going to happen in the silence, in the, the suggested fourth beat. Um, <clears throat> so obviously prepare one's knuckles if you, for those who celebrate. Um, so here we go. You ready? One, two, three. Oh, yeah, well, that was a damp one. Uh, yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't like the ones that are wet. Now, <clears throat> Mr. Straub. Do we have a sufficient, I have to, this is a rough job here. Here, <laughs> let me put it up on screen. Usually, usually, usually Ryan gives you an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, this is not done, but. Here, now, would you like to read it together? Yo, let's, let's. Here, I'm gonna add a little flavor of. I mean, that's, this is obviously the Jerry that should be in the first panel. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, check I, I check merely, that arm. I uncovered what was already there. Um, okay, let's go. Yeah. Hey, why wasn't Mike able to make it out to this one? He couldn't. He had to stay there to anchor the Harkin stones. Oh, okay. Wow, I guess there's all kinds of stones. <laughs> Silence. This has, been the, this has been a ritual 20 years in the making. Now, Pax may achieve its true form, the form that was ever its intention. Hey, my brother Greg is a geologist. Like, if you need any rock help. He's probably going to need a new job. <laughs> Gathered friends, thank you so much. 20 years of Pax. Three days remain. Enjoy yourselves. See you next time. <laughs>